Dragon Age Veilguard is very different from Inquisition. The tactical camera is gone, but the combat adds a lot of new ways to interact and synergize your party members. Plus, there's a very extensive character creator this time around. We, of course, have details on that and many, many things, including a big Q&A session dropping very soon from Bioware. Later this week, we're going to find out more about the game as well. But in the meantime, we also have some brand new gameplay screenshots that, in my opinion, look amazing. So lots of details to dissect over here and extract out of them. So let's get started. So let's get started with one of the main points, especially for all of you Inquisition fans out there. You might want to transfer your choices into the Veil Guard. Well, guess what? That is absolutely possible, it's fully handled in game and there's also a way to recap some of these options in case you maybe want a refresher and didn't play the game in the past decade. So in this IGN interview with the game's director, he mentions that yes, we have the ability to import our choices, this is fully integrated into the character creator this time around. What's more is that you'll be able to customize your Inquisitor if you want to remake your protagonist from Dragon Age Inquisition which I find really interesting. So the way this is going to be handled, he later explains, is um, through some of these tarot cards, which kind of give you a refresher, a reminder of what those choices were, the context, and what decision you want to make. The way this is worded makes me assume that you can also make those choices from this screen in case maybe you want to go with a different path or maybe you didn't pick the appropriate choice back when you did play it. Now the next bit of info is combat and party system related, it comes from a few sources including Bioware's own accounts as well as a few interviews by major outlets and people who played the game. So yeah, it pains me to say this but it seems that the tactical camera is going to be gone and removed in Dragon Age the Veil Guard in favor of this new so called customizable ability wheel which by all accounts kind of fits a similar function. It's meant to pause the game, give you a way to analyze the battlefield and plan your next move. This is also where you can kind of interact with your other party mates and issue commands, attacks and see all the combo chains that you can pull off because that's another thing that is also new. So that looks really impressive. But in the meantime, this customizable ability wheel is seen here in the early moments of the game. This will allow you to control your companion's attacks and unleash powerful abilities. We do have some extra information from .esports on how this functions. So the top-down tactical mode has been replaced by a close to the action ability wheel. While you can still pause the game with this ability wheel and give orders to your other party members, check on their cooldowns and look at enemy weaknesses and resistances, it's not quite the same as the old system that could almost make combat function like a turn-based ARPG if you relied on the mechanic completely, which I wholeheartedly agree. I think that was the best way to pull it off, though at times it was kind of difficult to pull off proper chains because you constantly switched from characters. And of course, Bioware's reasoning behind this is the fact that they have to both accommodate veterans of the game but also new players entirely, a complete new generation of gamers, because honestly, it's been over a decade at this point since, of course, Dragon Age Inquisition. I kind of get their reasoning, but at the same time, I kind of wish there was a way to just switch between these two or maybe have a hybrid. For now, this seems like a pretty big letdown for the most part, but there are some lights at the end of this tunnel, as we're going to see in just a little bit. Um, in the meantime, you're going to control your own character in real time, third person action combat, you're going to have both light and heavy attacks, as well as parries and dodges. We've seen that dodges are no longer a specific skill that has a cooldown or a cost, but in fact, it's something that you're going to do a lot of, it's encouraged, and it's even a function of certain classes. Like for example, rogues take advantage of the way they dodge to also use their abilities. Um, you can of course also pause everything by pulling up that ability wheel to select further combat abilities, including combo attacks with your companions. So let's check a few of these combo attacks because we've actually seen how they work, at least in some of the screenshots. So here are actually a couple of screenshots of a combo sequence between the Shred ability as well as the Fade Bolts. One you will use to prime the target, the other is used to detonate. So in this case we have of course the Warrior class. In the foreground we of course have it Sword and Shield, some of its abilities being highlighted, but um, Shred is a damage, a melee damage ability that deals 198 points. 
36 second cooldown and it also deals high stagger but most important is that it applies that sundered effect that's going to be your quote unquote primer and once you apply that sundered effect on the target you can then take a look at the fade bolts it can be other abilities but in this case fade bolts also detonates sundered targets besides dealing 330 electric damage and applying shock on hit so once you pull that off you're going to unleash that detonation and it's going to also shock that target plus deal a whole bunch of damage if you played previous like mass effect games and especially andromeda and even like inquisition i believe had some combos like these it's basically that Besides this, another piece of important information here is obviously the enemy weaknesses. We can see fighting an ogre over here with the party and it's vulnerable to fire, but it's resistant to, I guess, toxic damage. So again, vulnerabilities and weaknesses are a major part of the combat, even more so this time around, and there are ways to exploit them. You're going to, in fact, want to exploit enemy weaknesses if you want to truly fare better in combat. And you're going to want to do that because even returning enemies like, for example, some of these pride demons are not as weak as they were before. They are an even bigger pain to bring down this time around. So yeah, they have a whole new set of more tricks and in this version of the monsters they can teleport around the battlefield and even unleash brutal ranged attacks. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be all difficult because the game also features an easy mode. So you can actually just focus on the story pick the easy mode and there are even settings which make it impossible for your player character to die in battle i do know that some people want to approach the game casually but like i said we do have a lot of other gameplay screenshots as well featuring different environments and places that we get to visit i think that they look absolutely gorgeous so you're going to see them running in the background right now and yes, it's not just Thedas that we get to see, it's not just Minrathus that we get to visit, there's a bunch of other interesting places as well. So it's been confirmed that, among others, we'll also get to visit the Rivain Peninsula, the Fortress of the Grey Wardens, also the Elven Forest over Lathan, and the Winter Capital of Minrathus, of course, also the Deep Roads, and way, way more, at least confirmed by WCF Tech. So, uh, definitely interesting places and probably many more but biomes will be as diverse as bustling cities lush tropical boreal forests forbidding swamps and the deepest dungeons the veil guard will assemble at the lighthouse the classic rpg style place where you can rest and chat with companions at your leisure there is also an exclusive first look at another major city which is the dog town so the bustling dog town is the home to detective nevegalus which we do know is um, one of the companions one of the big seven companions that we do get in dragon age the veil guard so yeah it looks absolutely awesome there are a bunch of boats here it seems that the dock is pretty packed also the architecture is um, significantly different than the previous shot we have of the main city so looks really awesome and all of these shots right here i cannot wait to see them in game we also have a few more screenshots of pretty much all the classes at some higher levels we do know that we have mage warrior and rogue these are the main classes and then they have three subclasses each we have the screenshot of a higher level rogue a couple of them actually where he also uses like the two swords short swords plus of course the bow um, besides that, we do know that its subclasses are Duelist, Saboteur, and Veil Jumper. Um, for the Warrior, which we can see right here wielding a sword and a shield, there are a couple of them, I believe, that have been confirmed, including the Slayer, the Reaper, which is kind of like the Reaver from before, and then there's also Champion, but not much details on abilities besides the ones we see right here. And then we also have for the mage, but we don't actually know any subclasses at all. We do see it casting a meteorite, which looks really interesting. Most likely high damage, high impact, maybe we'll like cast Sunder again on the targets. Who knows? We're going to wait and see. Now, besides this, like I said before, there is a lot of information on the character customization. Unfortunately, we don't see that in action, but people actually did play around with it or at least saw gameplay footage of it and the demos were one hour long or so for some of the previewers which um, actually makes me very interested in what types of characters we can create so we do have another article from polygon right here which um, says this 
So yeah, just besides the races, the classes, and of course your option of a background between like the six or so different factions you can choose, um, there is more to the character customizer because it has lots of sliders for body parts and overall shape, none of which are tied to the voice or pronouns. Also, another thing that the team paid special attention to are the hair options. So it shows off an extensive curly and textured hair option in the game, including several versions of braids and locks and a lot more in there, including also ways to change your character's physical appearance at any time during the game, but not their class or backstory. And all of this you can actually then check, you can check the character in different lighting upon designing them, which is going to give you a better general sense of how they also should look like in game and in cutscenes. Previously, you would create a very good looking character in like Inquisition, but then you took it in the real world or saw it through cutscenes and it was completely not the same. So it seems this is a way to actually mitigate or completely remove that. Games Radar actually goes in a bit more detail over all of this, so you can pretty much adjust anything, including body customization and even morphing. From more muscular characters to curvier builds and just about any shape you want to give your character, there are all sorts of toggles to adjust so you can give them any figure you want. There's even features that let you choose proportions so you can alter their height, give them wider shoulders and much, much more. All of the options are about allowing you to build this character to somewhat that represents you, to make you feel like you're in the world, whether it's a character who looks like you or a character who looks like somebody you want. Beyond this, also makeup and tattoos, extensive hair options are also included, and there's also mentions of some kind of strand system to make your character behave and move in a believable way for the different races, though it does not expand on that. To me, it sounds like the same system we have in Dragon's Dogma 2 that controls how the animations play when you run and the way you hold weapons in your hands, for example. It kind of seems like that, but maybe I'm just reading it wrong. Now, we do have one final announcement, which is the fact that in a few more days and more specifically on June 14, there's going to be a Discord developer Q&A, which um, Bioware is going to host. So if you do have information that you want to, for example, ask and pass on to the developers or any questions for that matter about the game, this is going to be the time to do that. I am going to, of course, go over a quick recap once that's done with some of the biggest questions, which hopefully are going to answer some of the biggest concerns for the game, but also maybe shed some light over what's going to also come to Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Plus, there's going to be June 18, Game Informer cover story. I believe there are some teasers of it right now, but I think that's not really accessible through Europe, unfortunately. I cannot buy that from here so if you do manage to get your hands on that or maybe there's a way to buy it from the us and you have to find some information totally let me know down below in the comments but more to come all summer looks quite exciting it seems that bioware is quite confident this time around about the game and what they have in store so we're gonna wait and see how that pans out it's been a long time since their previous games so i cannot wait to see if they actually managed to pull things off this time around Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.